Welcome to the Biltmore Church Podcast. Our church exists to glorify God by making disciples of Jesus who reach up, reach in, and reach out. And this podcast is a resource that's hopefully going to help you do just that. We kicked off a brand new teaching series today called Friends of the Family, where over the next six weeks, we're going to have a good friend of our church here preaching God's word. And then bonus here, we've got some of them coming in for our podcast starting today. We got a good friend Clayton King in hey, the house. So hopefully everybody uh, listening and watching, you guys were able to see the service on Sunday. If not, I'd encourage you to go back. He did a great job of preaching God's word today. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't know Clayton, Clayton uh, is a really good friend of our church. He's a pastor down at New Spring Church. He's an author, president of Clayton King Ministries. There's a ton of other stuff, but you know we're not going to record for three hours, so yeah. that feels like a good place to start. Yeah, man. But I, thanks for being here. It's an honor. Honor. Yeah. Always love being here. And another bonus. We have Michelle Myers for the first time. First time first on the time. podcast. Um, grateful to have both of you on to have the conversation. Michelle, also an author, also a ministry leader. She's also a part of our church. She's married to James, who's mm-hmm. one of our pastors here. Um, and you guys are already friends. So I'm just planning on starting the conversation and just sitting here and watching two friends hang out and talk <laughs> a little bit. Um, but really grateful you guys are both on here today. We were talking a little bit about what we should talk about on today's episode, and pro wrestling is normally at the top of that list. As it should be. And maybe we should do one of those at some point. Yeah, but not today. Not today. I'm the wrong guest for that. (laughs) As am I. Just to be clear. As am I. It's a different language when it comes up in conversation with me. So that was off the table. So instead, we're going to be talking about uh, developing real friendships. Mm. There may be a better way to say that, but that's kind of the conversation um, today. And as we were talking through the ideas, this one came up quickly. I think, Michelle, you mentioned Mm -hmm. this. So really for either one of you, but if you want to jump in here, maybe why is this an important topic? Why is this at the top of your list of something you're like, that would be really cool to talk about? Um, yeah. why, why is it, why is it so big? Man, cause we are more lonely than we ever have been. And that's not just church talk. That's physicians, that's leaders in secular spaces. Everybody is talking about the loneliness epidemic and it comes from our regular rhythms of valuing productivity and putting our identity in the wrong spaces. We just don't leave margin in our lives anymore for relationships Mm -hmm. as a general rule of thumb. Yeah. Yeah, I think when I talked about this, excuse me, at the staff retreat a week or two ago, I mentioned that as one of the lessons I've learned in ministry and it seemed Mm -hmm. to really strike a chord. I know the people that I talked to afterwards said that that was the one thing they really keyed in on the most was the importance of having Mm -hmm. real friendships the data proves what I think we all know intuitively, which is the happiest people are the people that have the deepest meaningful friendships, right. relationships, human connection. And we are so addicted to our technology. Mm. We're so addicted to productivity. And you, you don't ever really hear stories of people on their deathbed saying as they breathe their dying breath, <laughs> I wish I'd worked more. <laughs> right. I wish I had the new yeah. iPhone. But what you do here, and I've been around death enough to know as a pastor, you're people wishing they'd spent more time with their kids, Mm -hmm. wishing that they had made something right with an old friend while there was still time. And God has wired us for that. He's wired us for friendships. He's wired us for relationships. I know that in ministry, it's a real temptation. Shari and I have talked about this a lot. It's a real temptation for us to think, well, if we've got each other, we're good. Right. And she's my only wife. Nobody else can be my wife. I'm her only husband. No one else can be her husband. But I've got to have friendships, and she has to have friendships that aren't dependent upon me, yeah. her. Because those friendships give human connection in other ways that are necessary for us to remain healthy in the way that we view the world and mm-hmm. the way that we view God. You know? Yeah. I saw an Instagram reel, ironically, the other day, <laughs> but it was the, uh, the, the Surgeon General of the United States. He was asked, basically, what is the next big thing? And he said, hey, it's loneliness. Yeah. He said, over all the other things we could talk about, loneliness is the, 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 the mm. key thing, especially for adults. Well, think about what's happened in our culture. COVID really created a lot of this, but it was already there. Mm-hmm. Now we have businesses, uh, an entire culture, really, an entire industry in our, in our culture, country. You don't ever have to leave your house. Right. right. You can have groceries delivered. You can have fast food delivered. You can see your doctor on a telehealth call. You never have to go to a meeting. You can do everything on Zoom or, or FaceTime. Um, and I think I've, I've read st- several stories about in Japan, there are people that have already done this. In Japan, there are people that have not left their apartments in years wow. because they just know they can do everything they need to do on their phone. And literally down to the cellular level, 
It affects the, the actual heart that pumps the blood. Right. It affects your ability to breathe. It affects your ability for the synapses in your brain to fire. God made our bodies. I don't want to geek out on this too much, but but I am. Give me a, a chance to <laughs> Go geek ahead. out. When Shari and I wrote True Love Project for Lifeway, we were amazed with the research. We read a book called Hooked and several books, but this is the one that stood out. And I learned about oxytocin and vasopressin. Mm -hmm. And these are two chemicals that God made men and women to have. Oxytocin is called um, chemical cement. Okay. It literally cements people together. So when a woman has a baby, she goes through that terrible ordeal, the pain of delivering a baby, massive amounts of oxytocin are delivered into her body after she has a baby to help her forget how painful it mm. was to have a baby so that she'll have another baby. Vasopressin's another one. This, when a husband and a wife embrace, when they hold each other, a big hug, it's been proven that if you'll do that for 30 seconds or more, your body floods with oxytocin wow. and vasopressin. These are the chemicals that make us drawn to other people. Mm -hmm. So there's a chemical reality to why we need friendships, mm. but there's also a spiritual reality, but we can't separate the physical, the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, because we're one person. And for us to function well as God made us, we have to have real friendships with people that we can talk to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the big thing. I think as an adult in today's world, making friends can be <laughs> uncomfortable. It can be awkward. It's not like, you know, on the playground where you just run up to a kid and say, do you want to play tag? So maybe some early practical steps for people who are like, I'm in that lonely place, mm -hmm. not really sure where to go from here. What would you recommend? Yeah. So I think the first one would be understanding everything that Clayton just said about realizing that your your digital relationships, the way we keep in touch, was meant to be a way to kind of reinforce in between real time with people. It was never meant to sustain or to replace. And so uh, Justin Early just wrote a book called Made for People, and he makes the analogy of all of your di digital interactions with people are like eating a snack, but it's not a meal. And so if you are snacking on relationships, but not taking any times for meals, then you've got to weave in some real time and space for people. And as far as where to go to meet those people, I think everybody in this circle would say church is a great place to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And to make sure that you're prioritizing getting into a connect group, a smaller group where you are really getting to know people because it's about community is really about this idea of being fully known and fully loved. And in order to do that, like you've got to have some vulnerability. And I think when you open up scripture with people, when you share that belief, it's just an easy way to be able to develop a friendship with someone on the deepest level that you can connect with. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you have to have the, um, if you're looking for places to go to meet people, um, it's easy easier to go to a place like a Sunday morning here at Biltmore. Mm -hmm. So Sunday morning here at Biltmore, a person could come and they could just kind of, um, come in and leave, never make a contact with somebody. Right. But that's a good start. That's a great start. The, the, I think the key is to get into a place where you can actually talk to somebody. So with guys, I know it's easier to start friendships and relationships doing activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoy music, ask some guys to go to a concert together. Um, Shari bought me um, a stove, a solo stove last year for Christmas so that I would have an excuse to invite guys over to the house. Yeah. And so probably about one Sunday night a month, I have some guys over to the house and we'll sit on the back deck. We'll sit around the solo stove. I've got an actual fire pit. When it's cold enough, we'll build a big fire. And sometimes uh, if you've got us for guys, I'm not sure how it is with, with women, but with guys, there has to be almost a central thing that's mm -hmm. sort of in the middle of why you're together that almost distracts you enough to actually open up and talk. Mm -hmm. Food, mm -hmm. a ball game, a fire pit, uh, a clay shoot, fishing, hunting, going to a sporting event, going to a concert. Um, guys need activity oftentimes to develop the, the conversational skills to talk. Whereas <clears throat> I think with women, Shari's explained this to me, it's, a little, it's different. It, mm -hmm. it can, it, it's different for so many reasons. We don't need to delve into that. But church is a great funnel yes to kind of get in and really i'll say this man i don't think there's anything better in america for people to form true friendships through than the church mm -hmm. you've got sporting events you've got public school you've got civic events but church is a place where good people who know they're broken and sinful and they need help they're already there mm -hmm. so you're already in a I would call it a safe place. Of course, every church doesn't fit everybody's personality. You got to find the one that 
you feel most comfortable in? I still think that females would like an activity too. They might relationally get there a little bit faster just mm-hmm. because the word count is a little bit higher, but I still think like a cheese board, some chocolate, something like that. It's probably charcuterie. a really- Charcuterie. Do go. you do that when you do the fire pit? You got a charcuterie board going? The charcuterie board at my house is if there's any leftover deer meat <laughs> in the fridge. Hey boys, y'all hungry? Um, it's funny because when, when I tell Shari that guys are coming over, she used to always ask, well, do you want me to go get something? Should I get snacks? And I was always like, no, we'll just eat whatever's here. And it took her a while to realize that like, she really didn't have to go mm-hmm. out and, and do a lot to get ready for us. Um, honestly, put on a game, set something on fire, make something blow up, (laughs) make loud noises, um, or just, you know, just getting together and being outside. Right. Those are things that, but we have to plan it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so hard right now in America, because there's always an excuse that someone Mm -hmm. can use. I'm just so busy. And if we don't plan friendships, friendships don't happen. We don't drift into friendship. We have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, the way I approach it is there's there's two approaches. There's like the, the the east and the west approach for me. On one side of my life, I have to work to maintain friendships I've had for a long time. Because you can't make old friends. Mm-hmm. Right. You can make new friends and hope they become old friends, but you can't make an old friend. So you've got to take time to really um, reach out, talk on the phone, go see people. But then you've also... Because I don't live around a lot of the people I went to college with or even a Mm. lot of the people I went to high school with. I've moved a few times. And so I've got to form new friendships with people that actually live in my town because it's easier to see them and talk to them than it is for me to get in the car and drive to Virginia or drive even to Asheville, which is only a little over an hour from my house. And so if you just know that you got to do both and you know what what the challenge is, it's a lot easier to come up with a game plan. So maintaining the friendships that you've had for a long time <clears throat> and trying to form new ones, uh, it's not impossible. Mm-hmm. It just takes work. Mm-hmm. But everything in life takes work if it's That's worth right. something, you know? Yeah. I think somebody's got to go first in terms of like, who's going to organize it? Who's going to make it happen? And if you're sitting here and you're listening to this and you're like, this is something that I need, then go first. Yeah. And I think that you can make a friend if you can ask questions and if you can listen. Wow. Like that's really, if you will ask people how they're doing, listen to them and give them a safe space, I think it opens up pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna ask, you know, how do you go from an activity or hanging out into some of that deeper mm-hmm. level, whether it's conversation, um, vulnerability? Is it just it happens? Do you work for that? What would you recommend? I think it takes time. Mm. And so I think you've got to be patient with it. Like Clayton was saying, you can't make an old friend. And so you can't expedite relational equity. It does take time and investment. And so if it feels a little awkward the first time, that's okay. Like if it takes a little bit for you to feel like you're getting somewhere, that's Mm. okay. But just ask the questions and and listen. Listening loves people so well Mm -hmm. because we just... We live in a world where everybody's talking yeah, and nobody's really listening. And I'll tell you, for me as a guy, <clears throat> what, I've, what I've learned is that in guy friendships, somebody has to initiate. And if I'll go first and confess weakness, struggle, mm-hmm. something that's really hard, mistakes I've made, sins I've committed, things I'm fighting through, my season of depression I went through years ago, if I'll talk about that with a guy, a hundred percent of the time, he'll reciprocate. Wow. But somebody's got to take that first step. Yeah. And, and it's vulnerability. And it's a stereotype, but guys tend to be afraid of vulnerability. We don't want to be seen as weak. Mm-hmm. I just learned a long time ago, that's a fight I'm not having. I'm not fighting to look strong. It wears me out. And at the end of the day, I don't look strong. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to own my weakness and own my shortcomings. And so if there's a guy that I want to really be close to, then I know I have to take, I have to set the tone for our friendship to just maybe call him up. And, and um, a lot of times on the phone, it's easier. I still make phone calls. I'm one of the few people in America that still <laughs> makes a phone call. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but when I'm on the phone, I could, I could be with the guy shooting the breeze, talking about the game, talking about AEW versus WWE. <laughs> oh, I had to bring in it at, well, at least one time yeah, in the podcast to. <laughs> today. I could be talking about that kind of stuff. And then there's other times where it's like, I'll call up a friend and say, I just need you to pray for me. I've been sick this week. I'm having a real hard time. Didn't sleep well the last couple of nights. I'm worried about this thing. I'm, I'm burdened about blah, blah, blah. 
And once I do that with a guy, 100% of the time, he'll say, man, thank you for sharing that with me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll either, typically I'll say, is there anything I can pray for you about? That's when a guy will share his vulnerability. Mm -hmm. What can I pray for you about? All the married men I know want me to pray for their marriages. And all the dads I know want me to pray for their kids. Mm -hmm. That's just a great way in. Maybe for someone who's listening, who's looking for a resource or resources that you'd recommend um, if this is a thing that's weighing really heavily on them or something they want to take. Obviously, we, they can do all the practical steps you mm -hmm. guys laid out, but any resources that you'd recommend? I think about Romans 12 yeah. as like a place in scripture to go to really think about all the theology that's built and then a, hey, listen, and this is how it looks like when you practice it with other people. Mm. And I don't think there's anything in that chapter that's necessarily easy, but I think it does give us an idea of the kind of effort that it takes to have real deep relationships with other people. Yeah, I'm gonna give you two, uh, two suggestions, two resources here. They're gonna both sound really weird. <laughs> About 25 or 30 years ago, there was a book written called Bowling Alone. Okay. Now this is a dated book. But <clears throat> this was somebody early on, I, can't, I read it, I can't even remember the author's name, Bowling Alone. And what he did is he noticed that bowling leagues around the country were closing down because mm -hmm. people had stopped going to bowling alleys. This was a big thing back in the 70s and 80s, even back in the 90s. And people had begun to make enough disposable income to entertain themselves at home so they did not need to go out with their friends and have that social fabric, that social connection anymore. So that was a fascinating book. Great. Here's the other book I'm gonna suggest. This is gonna sound so strange. The Lord of the Rings. Mm. <laughs> I, I kid it. you not. I kid you not. That trilogy, um, well, the movies were, were a trilogy. The, the, anyway, The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien, to me, is the sneakiest way to learn about what true friendship looks like because mm -hmm. no one's telling you that you need to be friends. You just see this story played out between these people that are very, very different. And you see the way they love and sacrifice for each other. Peter Jackson did a great job in the movies of showing the friendship between Samwise Gamgee and um, uh, uh, Frodo, right? <clears throat> but there were other friendships in yeah. the books yeah. that 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 really come to life. And I would, I just think it makes you a better human being to read the Lord of the Rings. Anyway, I think it's the greatest literature ever written beside the Bible. Um, so that might come as a as a surprise, but that would be a resource I would encourage people to read. I want to mention too, easiest resource if you go to our church. And join a group. If you're not in a group, mm -hmm. join a group. It's not a guarantee that you're going to make instant friendships in there like you guys talked about, but it is a great place to start. Um, so check out the website. We've got a whole thing on there. You can actually go through and see all the groups and like what they're doing on a weekly mm -hmm. basis. And you can contact the group leader um, to talk about getting into that thing. So we make it as easy as we can. And then also, I was going to mention this at the front, and then we, we got going so fast I forgot. Michelle, you're about to be joining our staff team here at the church. Yeah. And part of what you're going to be doing is women's discipleship. Mm -hmm. So if you're a lady and you're listening and you're like, I needed to hear this today, mm -hmm. maybe connecting with Michelle. Yeah. Uh, and looking forward to some of the things that she's going to be doing over the next few months. Um, but man, just take the practical steps. Cannot wait to see you guys next Sunday. Clayton, thank you so much for being here today for preaching God's mm -hmm. word. God. uh, you did a fantastic job. It was amazing to see um, so many people come to faith in Christ, but mm -hmm. also um, one of the things that struck me was uh, as a pastor seeing, how long have you been, how long have you been preaching the gospel? 36 years. 36 years. And to see the way that today you were as emotional mm -hmm. about people coming to faith in Jesus as you probably would have been 36 mm -hmm. years ago. Um, I think is a real example, not just to our pastors and our leaders, but um, to everyone who's following Jesus. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your for your vulnerability today. Uh, I think that yeah. meant a lot to our church. But uh, and thank you, everybody listening, watching. Uh, we love having you on here every single week. We're going to be back next week again. Uh, it, it, we may not talk about wrestling next week, but there's a chance. There is a chance. So we can't wait to see you next Wednesday and this Sunday. As always, you guys are loved and sent. <laughs> <laughs>